In this video, I'm talking about the eight FDA red flags that if discovered during a hearing evaluation should trigger a referral to an ear, nose, and throat physician. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, doctor of audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. While a comprehensive hearing evaluation with an audiologist or board certified hearing instrument specialist should be your first thought if you're having difficulty hearing, not all ear related conditions can be handled by these types of providers. That's why there are eight red flags that are indicated by the Food and Drug Administration that should trigger a referral to a licensed physician, particularly an otolaryngologist, otherwise known as an ENT, so they can handle the medical related issues that you may be having in your ears before you actually pursue hearing treatment with hearing aids. Conditions like microtia, which result in a pinna that is smaller or deformed, and oral atresia, which is the absence of an ear canal, can be linked to conditions like Goldenar syndrome or treacher collins syndrome, both of which require the attention of a licensed physician. While individuals with an ear deformity may still need hearing amplification, other medical treatments such as reconstructive surgery may be required first. The second red flag is a history of active drainage from the ear in the last 90 days. Otitis externa, also known as swimmer's ear, can occur when bacteria or fungus infect your outer ear canal. It can be caused by spending a lot of time in water, hence the name swimmer's ear, but it can also be caused by inserting foreign objects into your ear canal, like the things you would use to remove earwax from your own ear, like keys or bobby pins and even Q-tips, which by the way, you should never stick inside of your ear canal. You also have otitis media, otherwise known as a middle ear infection. If enough fluid builds up, it can lead to a rupture of your eardrum, causing that fluid to leak out of your ear canal. Both of these conditions require medical intervention from a licensed physician, which could include antibiotics or even pressure equalization tubes. The third red flag is a history of sudden or rapidly progressive hearing loss within the last 90 days. First of all, if you have a sudden hearing loss, you should get in to see an ear, nose, and throat physician as soon as humanly possible because success in treating a sudden hearing loss has a lot to do with how quickly you actually get treatment. Treatment for these types of hearing losses by your physicians may include oral steroids or even a trans-tympanic injection of steroids, which is an injection using a syringe through your eardrum. Now hopefully these treatments result in the restoration of your original hearing ability, but if they don't, there is a high probability that you're gonna end up being a candidate for hearing aids, or in some cases, even a candidate for a cochlear implant. The fourth red flag is acute or chronic dizziness. If you are experiencing dizziness and vertigo, that should trigger a referral to a medical professional, so they can actually get you pointed in the right direction, which actually is most likely going back to an audiologist who specializes in diagnostics for vestibular conditions. There can also be conditions such as Meniere's disease or even a tumor growing on your auditory nerve, which is causing these symptoms of dizziness. So it's always a good idea to get those medical conditions taken care of first, and then going to see your audiologist or hearing instrument specialist to get hearing treatment. The fifth red flag is a sudden or recent onset of unilateral hearing loss within the last 90 days. Very similar to the third red flag, a sudden hearing loss in one ear will also likely result in oral steroids or a trans-tympanic injection. If this medical intervention is unsuccessful at treating that unilateral hearing loss, then you will likely be a candidate for a variety of different unilateral hearing loss treatment options, such as cross, bicross, amp cross, or a bone anchored hearing device. The sixth red flag is an audiometric air bone gap that is equal to or greater than 15 decibels at 500 hertz, 1000 hertz, and 2000 hertz. The reason that an audiometric air bone gap requires a medical referral is that it indicates that there's either a conductive or mixed hearing loss. A conductive hearing loss is when sound cannot properly pass through the outer ear and or the middle ear to the inner ear where sound is converted into an electrical impulse and sent to the brain. Let me show you an example of an air bone gap on an audiogram. When identifying an air bone gap, we are looking for the difference between the brackets on the graph and the circles or the X's on the graph. The brackets represent the hearing sensitivity of the inner ear alone that is recorded via bone conduction. The circles and X's represent your hearing sensitivity when sound has to pass through your ear canal and your middle ear space before it gets to the inner ear. If you see a 15 decibel or more difference at 500 Hz, 
1000 hertz and 2000 hertz, then you have a significant enough of an air bone gap that it requires a physician referral. Conductive and mixed hearing losses can be caused by a variety of different factors, including fluid buildup in the middle ear space, or even conditions like otosclerosis, among others. Now, treatment for these types of conditions can often include surgery, bone-anchored hearing devices, or good old-fashioned hearing aids. The seventh red flag is visible evidence of significant cerumen accumulation or a foreign body inside of your ear canal. In cases where impacted earwax or a foreign object is stuck inside of your ear and it cannot be safely removed by your hearing care professional, it should trigger a referral to a licensed physician who can remove those obstructions for you. Attempting to treat hearing loss using hearing aids when there's something stuck inside of your ear is never going to end up well anyway, so you need to make sure that you have a professional remove whatever it is inside of your ear canal. And the eighth FDA red flag that should trigger a referral to a ear, nose, and throat physician is pain or discomfort inside of your ear. There are a variety of medical conditions that can cause ear pain, several of which I've already discussed in this video. Most of these conditions actually need to be treated with medications or surgical intervention, neither of which can be done by an audiologist or a hearing instrument specialist. Once you get whatever condition is causing that pain under control and you still have a hearing loss, that is the time that you want to go back and see your hearing care professional. At the end of the day, if you have your hearing tested and you end up having one of these eight red flags and you were not referred to a medical professional like an ear, nose, and throat physician, then I highly recommend that you get a hold of your primary care physician so you can get a referral right away. Because the sooner you get these red flags taken care of, the sooner you can get back to hearing. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. If you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com.